Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Davis from Creative One Solutions. Today I will be discussing the 2023 GLS host site Scenic Elements. I worked as a Scenic Director for Willow Creek Church for almost 15 years and created over 220 Scenic Designs. I'm very humbled that I could help you with your visual experience for your stage. With that said, in this video we'll look at the latest renderings, materials we used, paint choices, tools used, construction techniques, and how to rig. Let's get started. So let's begin with the latest rendering of what you will see on main stage during the GLS conference. This structure is constructed of LED panels that form this giant square. The blue graphics are rectangles that will be shown throughout the conference. These rectangle areas will help place the background content in the right areas for our camera shots and give us more of a visual interest. Now let's take a look at the rendering design for the host sites. Now in order to give you a perspective of what your sync design might look like at your church, I created a rendering showing what your church stage may look like with the scenic elements you create. As you can see, the scenic design of these foam squares creates a connection to the large square LED wall that will be on Will Creek's main stage for the GLS. To add visual interest and structural support to the squares, I added a square of coreplast plastic within the square. This will give you more lighting options as well. These squares will be easy to create with the right tools. How long will it take to create these squares in order to plan your time? I believe you should be able to create 16 of these squares in about 8 to 10 hours and rigging them about at least 4 to 6. Now keep in mind these are an investment and you could reuse them for years to come. When I'm designing for the host sites, I'm trying to design a set that you could use over and over and can store well. Several years ago, I was in the Dominican Republic visiting a church, and this church had been a host site for the GLS for many years. In the back of the stage, they stored their scenic sets, and I recognized several scenic elements they had created from years past when they were a host site for the GLS. They said they still use them for the weekend services, and they were grateful to learn how to create the scenic sets from these how-to videos the GLS sponsors. With that said, I'm grateful that we can partner with you and your church for years to come. Now, let's discuss the materials. In this photo, you're looking at the dimensions of the squares and coreplast samples, natural and white in color. The main materials to purchase are pink foam, 4x8 sheets, 2 inches thick, and sheets of coreplast 4x8 by 4 mil natural in color. The foam and coreplast can be purchased from most lumber companies such as Home Depot, Menards, and Lowell's, though the coreplast may need time to be ordered. I do know coreplast sheets are in stock and cheaper from Laird's Plastic, which is a company that sells coreplast in many big cities throughout the U.S. It will take several days to ship to your site, though. For my location, I was close enough to Laird's to purchase the sheets needed. If getting the coreplast is a challenge for you, you may have to compromise on the coreplast color and size. Let me suggest going to your local lumber companies first and asking for natural or white coreplast sizes that they have in stock. In this design, I'm showing a 28 inch by 28 inch piece of coreplast. If, if you could find at least a 24 inch by 28 inch piece, it will look very similar to the original design. Both colors, natural and white, will take lighting very well. The only thing about white though, front lighting is the best. The natural color, you could do both front or back lighting. Both materials, foam and coreplast, are lightweight and easy to cut and easy to hot glue. At the end of the video, I'll give you a complete material list for you. Next, let's discuss the color. If you plan on lighting the square with lighting colors, the best choice is painting the foam with a medium gray paint. I picked out a Dutch boy color called Over the Moon. This color is the same color we use at Willow Creek for most of our projects. What we found is that this gray intensifies each color the lighting throws at it. 
If you decide not to light the square with some sort of lighting color, you may want to paint the frame a bright color so it'll pop. The GLS has graphic color choices they will be using throughout the conference. Any of these colors would be ideal for your application. Well, let's discuss the tools needed. In this photo, you get an idea of what we need for tools. To cut the two inch foam, you need a tool that will cut and leave a smooth edge. A power saw with a sharp blade is the best choice, and you could use a table saw or a track saw as well. The trick to sawing the foam is taking your time and not forcing the blade into the foam. Also spraying the blade with silicone before you begin to saw, this will help to keep the blade clean and less grabbing the foam. After sawing, use a sanding block to create smoother edge cuts and 150 grit works well. Next, a hot glue gun will be used to glue the joints. Almost all of the scenic I created over the years were glued with a hot glue gun. One I would recommend is called Surebonder. It heats up fast and with a long glue stick, you can glue a project for a length of time. Multipurpose glue sticks work well for these kind of projects, by the way. And don't forget to adjust the glue gun's temperature for foam. Most glue guns will melt the foam as you're applying the glue. This is the re reason why you need a glue gun that has a temperature adjustment. Next, a few tips toward construction of the squares. Once you cut all the foam pieces for your frame, you should have two that are 28 inches long, 12 inches wide, and two that are 32 inches long and 12 inches wide. This makes up the outer perimeter of the square. Next, we need to cut the area where the core plast fits inside the foam. This cut is centered in the middle of the 12 inch width. You will need to cut two 16 inch lines on the 32 inch frame piece and two 14 inch lines on the 28 inch frame piece. The blade of the power saw is not wide enough for the core plast to fit into the cut, the reason for the two passes. Make sure before you cut both pieces to line both frame cuts. Another tip is to dry fit all the pieces before you hot glue. And when you hot glue, be sure to squeeze out a generous nickel sized glue puddle every inch. This will create a strong bond. Also, be sure to hold a square to the edge of the frame to keep the frame plumb as the glue is drying. We could see a side view of the two different layers of squares. Not only does this add to the visual experience, but also allows us to rig each square easily. In the other photos, you see the rigging points, the anchors used, and a J-hook glider. The best choice in rigging is to rig along the side of the square frame. I would recommend measuring four inches down and near center. Keeping it close to the center will keep it from pivoting to one side or the other. When rigging next to the core plast, place the anchor behind the core plast one inch away and four inches down from the frame. You don't want to place the anchor next to an edge because it becomes a weak point causing the anchor to fail. We will use plastic drywall anchors five eight inches in diameter and one and three quarter inch long. Use the screw that came with the anchor along with a D-ring picture frame holder. If you're using fishing line for rigging, it's best to make up the lines the exact length to keep the whole frame unit level and plumb. A better option is using the J-hook glider and aircraft cable. The J-hook glider has a quick adjustment built into it. You can order them through griplocksystems.com. Let me add, the capacity of squares on one line should be kept three or less. Each of these units weighs about two pounds. And now let's take a look at the material list. Lastly, don't miss the opportunity to include other individuals in this project. What a great opportunity to enjoy working on a project together and building lasting relationships. I've always felt that when we get to heaven, Jesus will ask us, 
What did we do toward discipling individuals and not necessarily what kind of beautiful scenery who he created? May we always use our gifts and actions to glorify God.